today's the day. Uh, a lot of you have been looking forward to this, and several of you have been saying I shouldn't do this at all, but we are putting solar panels on the roof. This is the easy pitch, 412 pitch. We've got a more difficult pitch to do later on the back side of the house. I'm looking forward to this. Let's get started. Now we're choosing a mounting technique that doesn't use rails. I think that's somewhat unusual in the industry. Typically, you put panels on rails. I'm doing it purely for cost purposes, to be honest. I did not choose this because I thought it was better, but I chose it because I thought it was good enough. In my example, the uh, cost of the mounts is just as much, if not more than, the cost of the panels themselves. With this approach, the main measurement we have to do is for the first row of brackets. Once we start with these first row of brackets, the next brackets just come down tight fit against the panels as, as they go in. So they're trying to make sure we get this good and square. Otherwise, you know how a bunch of uh, blocks side by side, if they're not square, they don't look so pleasant. Now, do I really care? We're way up here. This is the first time I've ever seen my roof up close. The only time I would care is if Christy's flying the drone over it. Which you will be, won't you? So, uh, yes, I care. What you doing, Jen? Well, we're making little foam blocks to hold up the leading edge of our panel um, so that we're not, the weight of the panel is not pushing down on these protea brackets when we're installing them. Okay. Uh, it just make, keeps the protea bracket from spreading out, makes it a lot easier. Okay. It's not in the instruction manual, it's just one of those tricks I like to use, makes life a little easier. So, we're gonna line up over there. You wanna go down and at least push these down because if you notice, they're tapered. Yeah. And so it'll throw your measurements off if they're not. You don't have to tighten them down, just push them down. And that'll do it. And now we can use those foam blocks up underneath the edge here. Oh, they already got them. Now this. See how that just holds that in place? Yeah. And then you can oh, okay. put your... See, I'd rather have my little snug. That way when I press on them, they widen up. And then that will just pop right in place like that. And you can do it, but I didn't take the tape off. I was just sure. Let's take the tape off and that one's ready to go. Okay. But see, I, I made that I made yeah. that foam just about a millimeter taller than it's supposed to be. And it, it actually kind of shrunk a little bit, but it, it's working. This is the weight. Let me pull that back up. There we go. Now we can put the four screws in. I found the information about roof mount brackets very confusing. So I'm gonna to try to detail it in some degree here just so that you can understand. First, no matter whether you're installing on rails or uh, railless like I'm doing, you have to have a, a base bracket that connects to your roof itself. There's not much information on ag panels like this. This is sometimes called a G-rib, sometimes called an ag panel and I, I find it hard to find mounts that are for the ag panel. Now, I'm showing you this protea bracket, that's what I chose, but right now it's configured with this L foot right here, okay? And that would be to mount a rail. So this, with this L foot on this bracket, you would mount your rail right there to the L. Now, that doesn't work for my railless solution, so we turn it over. Now, We've got the rail turned over and uh, I've got it all loose, but you can see the amount of flexibility that this bracket's got, right? It'll, it'll fit a lot of different angles. So what we do is, is we take this bracket and we put it on the, the ag panel and we get this foot, we're, we're sliding the, this upside down L foot um, as far down as it'll go. And then I'm just using a gear wrench here to tighten it up, okay? That's how we do that. We try to keep these pretty close right here so that when we squeeze them down on the roof, they're, they're really tight. There's a, a, a rubberized adhesive under there. You pull this uh, little tape off and you get to that adhesive. It is very sticky. We put them on the roof here and we use these screws. Notice the neoprene there, right through these four holes and so the screws are holding it only to the ribs. It doesn't go into the underlying wood at all. 
Okay, now above that, we're using the S5 PV kit, and there's two different styles. Um, one style is the edge, so edge bracket, they call it, and that clamps to the uh, panel right there. It leaves a little T-channel here that we could mount something else, uh, say a, a varmint guard or maybe a cable tie or something, some, some way to, you know, just, just anything else that we'd want to put in this little T-rail, we could put in there. Now, this is called a mid-grab, and so it has a panel on each side of it. We'll start with the edge grab here. We put this right on here, and then there's a nut that goes on the bottom, and you've got about an inch of flex back and forth here to help you square your panels each time. PV kit comes apart and there's this disc here and it's got really sharp edges here. You squeeze this together and when you tighten down this T30 Torx on your panel, it, uh, it clamps in there and, and really bites right into the aluminum panel and that gives you your grounding between multiple panels. Now S5 makes some simpler brackets than this as well. This is, uh, as I said, the Protea bracket and it's got all of this flexibility on the width. If you've got a particular width of rib that they already support, you can get what's called a rib bracket. I think that right now there's five different flavors of it and it's less expensive um, and it's specifically made to fit a, a given size. For price on these things, I believe it's $11 and something for this piece. Um, eight or nine dollars for this. I was just kind of considering it twenty dollars per pair, right? Um, you need two on the bottom, right? Two on each side of the panel. So it turns out to be a little more than three per panel is kind of the way you can figure the price because if, if you went in a in an infinitely long row it would be three per panel but on the ends you need two so if you had only one row of panels, it'd be two on each side, right? Now this is not really the first choice of bracket um, because it's attached only to the rib. Uh, in my case, I have 29 gauge steel and that is tested and approved by S5, so that's safe. And because of that, I chose to have three brackets per panel, at least on the outside edge. I thought maybe in the center I could get by with two, but all the edge brackets, I have three. But if I could have done so, I would have went with a, a bracket that actually attached into the underlying purlins. The problem is with horizontal purlins, it's hard to be able to get a bracket right at the edge of each panel. So this gives you the flexibility necessary with that ribbed roof. My purlins under it, there's no OSB under this roof. And so really all I had was a purlin every two feet or just the ribs. So I went with the ribs, it only goes in the steel. We're getting rolling now. We're doing eight columns of five across here, and we're on the second column now. This install team has never installed these before, so Jed's been educating all of us on how to actually accomplish this. It's not that it's difficult, it's just a little different. It's just a little different. <laughs> One of the most complex parts of this is something that's self-induced on my part, because I was trying to save a buck. Um, I've got these um, rapid shutdown devices and I've got them for two panels. So one rapid shutdown device will shut down two panels at once. And S5 said, well, when I, when I was working to spec this stuff, they said not to use that. They said it would make the install more difficult. Well, they were right. But you know me, I'm going to save a buck where I can. I just didn't pay any attention, Jed. Yeah, anytime somebody sees two for one, I can buy half as many of something, they think it's gonna be easier. It's Absolutely. not always the case. Bogo. <laughs> Bogo, yeah. buy one, get one free. Making a lot of progress here. I continue to have two things really that hold us up. One is trying to get things mounted square. That's just a, a, a little bit of a challenge. And that's to keep consistent distance between all these panels. And I suspect we're overthinking it a little bit. I suspect it's gonna be out of sight, out of mind. One reason that we're all a little bit uh, maybe overdone about it is because <laughs> this building, unlike a lot of places, will have a drone flown over it quite often. The other issue is these two-for-one rapid shutdowns. They really do slow things down, and I uh, let a nickel get in the way of a dollar in that case. Let's take a closer look at these rapid shutdown modules and how they're wired. Uh, again, it's two panels 
for one module, okay, this is where you plug in one of the two modules. You notice there's a male and female, a positive and a negative. This is where you plug in the other module. And then these are the leads that go out to the next, uh, the next connection or you know, back to your inverter. Rapid shutdown is required by code, at least in some areas. I think it's required here, but this actually turns off the voltage at the panel based on a command or a software command that, that is fed through these same high voltage lines. So it, it, th there is an interesting signal. I don't ex exactly know how it's done, but there's a signal sent through these wires that tells this module to disconnect the solar panels. Uh, this is a safety feature, right? So if someone, uh, fire, for example, needs to work on it from the ground, there's a controller at ground level and you can turn that off and that will turn off all the panels at one time. For each module, in this case, it turns off two panels. Now this is the entry level version. The, the better version uh, does optimization as well. So if a portion of one panel is shaded, then that allows the rest of the array to function normally. But if with what I've got, I will not have any optimization. So if one panel is shaded, the rest of the panels in that string will not function well, right? So I won't get good, good amperage from that particular string. I chose this because of the price. $10.50 for two panels versus, I believe it was $58 per panel for the optimizer and rapid shutdown all combined in a single module. So $5,800 per panel at 108 panels, that was gonna cost me, what is that, $7,000, whereas this was $10 for two panels, so five or $600 total. Now in transparency, both S5 and Signature Solar have discounted their prices to me. I didn't get this stuff free, but I got a discounted purchase price from both of them but only after I reached out and said, hey, I'm going to be using your product in my install either way. Are you interested in working with me? And so both S5 and Signature Solar have chosen to do so. We have links to the S5 product at SignatureSolar.com. Appreciate it if you would uh, take a look there if you're considering buying. Now this steeper roof on the existing house is made differently. It's got three quarter inch OSB under it. And so we can actually screw these into the OSB. Now we use screws that look like these, only they're a little bit longer. Um, I don't have one sitting right here. But we just went right in the flat spot right here in between ribs. We can put them in any of them. Again, it's got the uh, adhesive on the bottom here put all three screws on this, and in that three-quarter OSB, this is incredibly strong. Um, we can actually stand on this, which is great because we need to on this steep roof. Now again, we still use the PV kit. So in this case, it'd be an edge bracket right here with the panel in here, or we could go with the mid bracket and have a panel on each side. So the PV kit portion is the same but this bracket is how we're actually attaching and we have much more flexibility because we've got OSB. These are much cheaper, okay? They can be used with rails as well, uh, but they are much less expensive. I think they're in the $6 range instead of the $11 range for these. Now, to me, $11 for this much manufactured aluminum is really not that bad. The $6 range is, well, it's even better. And we definitely only need two of these uh, at the bottom of each panel. So two on each side of each panel is, is what we need for this. Now I talked about cost savings as being one of the reasons for my choice. And this is one of the biggest aspects of that cost savings. Look how these brackets can fit all in here. This is the PV kit portion. This is the L brackets I was talking about. For a rail solution, you have those long rails and they cannot ship simple UPS. But I got just a few boxes of this stuff. It was just easy to ship. It's lightweight because it's aluminum and saved a lot. Yeah, saved a lot just on shipping. So that flexibility and cost savings was really my deciding factor. We've talked about cost a few times already, so let me go into a bit more detail. The solar panels I'm using are Hyperion. They're a 400 watt panel. They're actually bifacial, but I won't be using the backside of it at all. It's just that they were the least expensive per watt at the time. 
Um, $88 per panel. Now this was the end of 2024 when I purchased these. I was worried a little bit about the tariffs happening and sure enough they did. So this was all pre-tariff pricing. Now I can't remember the cost of the brackets when I purchased them, but SignatureSolar.com does have them now. And so you can see the detailed prices there. Again, it's about $20 per combo, the base bracket, as well as the PV kit. That's just a rough estimate right there. All this at SignatureSolar.com. What I have found is that the brackets and the mounting are more expensive, actually much more expensive than the solar panels in general. You might ask why we're installing them on the roof. Well, yeah, we do have 10 acres here, but I didn't want to clutter any of our 10 acres with solar panels. These solar panels would take up a lot of space, 108 panels. I did some drawings showing them in the backyard. Christy would veto anything in the front yard, but quite frankly, she wouldn't have to veto it because it wouldn't be brought up for a vote. I uh, didn't want them in my front yard either. I had one option that maybe was worth considering, and that would have been way behind our woods on the backside. I just don't even think that would have been a good plan. For number one, I would have had to run uh, wires a long distance. They would have been very large wires, so very costly in that. You see this DC current that would be coming from the panels, you know, would have to be ran that entire distance. You might even say, well, move the inverters back there. I went through that entire exercise, very costly, very painful, not the way to solve this problem. You take one look at our property and you say, look at all that roof line. You need to be using it. It's out of the way. And assuming all of this works, we should have no issues. We won't have to be up there again, unless it's just for some cleaning, which I can do the cleaning from the lift, or if in the big arrays up here on the shop portion, I'll be able to do cleaning from the roof itself. Now throughout this episode, you've likely noticed the New Holland telehandler. New Holland was kind enough to loan us this machine for this specific project, and I really don't think we could have got the job done without it. My lift just didn't have the capacity nor the ability to extend far enough to do what we needed to do. I'm thinking I might show you a little more in-depth view of the telehandler, specifically looking at some of the features. I had no idea some of the features existed and didn't even know some of them were technically possible. I think you might find it interesting, even if, like me, you'll probably never buy a telehandler just fascinating to see one so technologically advanced. I'll do that more in-depth view in a later episode. We don't have time today. But before I leave the topic, I'll just say that before 2025, I did not understand the extreme value of a telehandler. And now, after having a couple of them on the property, amazing. It took us four days to install all 108 panels. And overall, it went mostly to plan. Uh, I did not consider my stove pipe over there on the house, so I had to move one panel from the house to the shop. So that's the reason you see the one that sticks out upward there on the lower side of the shop here. The steep roof pitch cost us a lot of time. And the best way to illustrate that is to say that on the left side of the shop here, where the pitch is less steep at 412, the team did all 36 panels on the last day. Now we're not totally complete. We'll have to put the junction boxes on two of the arrays, run wires for each string in metal conduit to the inverters, and figure out how these rapid shutdown devices work so that we can get them non-shut down. What questions do you have? Are there aspects you'd like to see in more detail? Is there something we need to try to explain a little bit better? Let us know in the comments below. Meanwhile, we're trying to get prepared for insulation. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. <laughs>